you are brave enough to try some visual programming with Dynamo, and you've managed to venture this far into programming territory, you probably have two burning questions that keep you up at night. What the hell is Revit API and how you can use it? Today, we're going to strip Revit to the bone and learn how to leverage its application programming interface to our advantage so we can make it truly our own. Welcome back, this is me, Christina, and my mission is to help creative people get the best of Revit faster. Today, I'm going to share with you the not so well kept secret on how you can interact with any software out there to build your dream tools. But before we break down what exactly Revit API is, make sure to like and subscribe to this video. On this channel, I share valuable tips and tricks on how you can start with Revit and Revit API and fun videos on any Beam related topic that interests me at the moment. API or application programming interface is a medium through which developers can interact with the software to extend its functionalities. To put it simply, Revit API is nothing but a set of programs and instructions that allow us to build on Revit's functionalities. Exposing certain aspects of a software to developers is by no means an uncommon practice. With a little bit of research, you will easily discover that practically any Autodesk software out there has its counterpart in terms of API. And this definitely does not extend to Autodesk products alone. You should definitely go and look up Tecla API or Blender API. What can you use Revit API for, you might ask yourself? Well, Revit for sure is extremely powerful software product. However, every single company out there has its unique workflows and needs. And Revit API paired with C Sharp is definitely the most sustainable way to build a Revit plugin or a new Revit ribbon that will boost your productivity. In many ways, when we talk about Revit, we always focus on automating the creation of the geometrical aspect of our models. However, in many ways, I believe BIM coordinators nowadays are a bit like data analysts. So if you know Revit API paired with some Python, you will definitely be able to take your export and data import routines a little bit further. And at last, if you're curious about it, you can even take Revit API to the cloud using Autodesk platform services to develop your cloud native applications and run certain repetitive tasks like file update or uh, file creation overnight. How did I get hooked on the topic of Revit API? Well, after university, the realities of a standard structural engineering job did not feel fulfilling for me. So I decided to do some front end development which looked a bit more creative at the time. However, once I learned about building information modeling, Revit and Dynamo, I really decided that there might be something more in the AEC industry for me. The first script I ever created was in Dynamo and its purpose was to place ceramic tiles modeled from adaptive components on any roof I select in my model. But how do we use Revit API? Revit API is compatible with the .NET framework, which means that we can use it with languages such as C Sharp and a version of Python called Iron Python. However, there is this long-standing argument which of these two languages is superior. For me personally, it all boils down to what kind of future investment in programming you're planning to make. If you're looking to become a BIM designer with an edge, using Revit API paired with Python 
in environments such as Dynamo, FireRevit or Revit Python Shell is the right choice for you. However, if you are looking to expose yourself to a potential switch to BIM development, I suggest you go with C Sharp as it works reliably with most building information modeling software APIs out there. And it, will debut, and it will definitely give you a little bit of an advantage as a developer. Back to Revit API. Even before you settle on your programming language of choice, you can head over to revitapidocs.com and start exploring some of the Revit API classes, methods, and properties. If you're completely new to programming at this point, you might be scratching your head. Wait, what classes? However, object-oriented programming is probably the most popular programming model out there at this point. It organizes software design around data units rather than logic and functions. To put it simply, every single part of Revit has its class counterpart with its unique set of functions or methods and properties. In a short example, the new ribbon I added with my script is an instance of the ribbon panel class and the method add item allows me to add a new push button, also an instance of the class push button called subscribe to it. All right, so you made it this far, but maybe you are still a little bit hesitant whether to start learning Revit API and C Sharp. After all, both of these look a little bit daunting at first. However, there is a wealth of information out there, communities and resources that will definitely help your learning journey. And one of these resources I consider to be myself. So if you have any questions related to Revit API and C Sharp, make sure to post them in the comment section below. All right, so we made it to the end of this video. And if you are looking for more tips and tricks on how you can start with Revit API and C Sharp, make sure to like and subscribe.